Hi, my name's Jerry. I'm a twin trawler boat owner. We are in the middle of the coronavirus issue right now. So if you're watching this video at some point in the future, looking back, you'd at least know what's going on right now. Much of the country is shut down. People are laid off. People are told to stay in their homes, not to go out six foot minimum distance, social distancing between us and other people. And we're doing the best we can. And hopefully we'll turn the corner soon. But this video is about fishing, particularly fishing with a plastic worm. A twin troller by the name of Ken asked me if I would do a video about what it's like to get a bite on a plastic worm. My last video I did about using a small four inch finesse style worm, which sometimes has a different feel when you get a bite. This video, I am going to cover more of a standard size plastic worm that's Texas rigged. In the future, I've got some more kinds of worms to try to cover, but this is what we're gonna do today. So please follow me, come on along. In the description below this video, there are links to most of the items used in many of my videos. They are there so you can locate them in case you are interested. Okay, this is the continuation of a video I am doing on how to catch uh, fish with a plastic worm. And this is a Berkeley Power Bait. It's a seven inch worm. It has a curly tail. Here in Florida, we have so many weeds, you often don't see this bait fished here much, but you can certainly, and particularly you can do it in uh, open water where there isn't a lot of weeds because this tail tends to catch on the weeds and then it won't sink to the bottom where you're trying to get it to go. However, to throw this, you need a weight. Now I'm going to fish weightless for much of today, but if I used this, I'd have to put on a a sinker like this and this is a tungsten bullet shaped sinker and it's uh, 3 sixteenths I would put that on that but I am going to primarily fish today with this or at least start fishing today with a Gary Yamamoto 5 inch Yama Senko commonly known as a Senko and it's also known as a type of bait called a stick bait. It is a watermelon with black and red flake in it. Colors don't make an awful lot difference to me. All I care about mostly is that it's a dark colored, but sometimes the fish like other things. And these are, these two baits are uh, commonly called a trick worm. And this actually is called a Zoom trick worm. This one's in June bug. And this one is made by another competitor, Wave Worms. And if you look, they look almost identical. They're just about the same length, very close in shape. Uh, it's a very popular worm to fish with, and it catches a lot of fish. But first, we're going to put this one on. And I wanted to show you how I rig it, and uh, I didn't do that on purpose, so let me do that now. All right, I'm going to rig this weightless on a, I believe this is a four-rod hook. It, it could be a three. Um, I use both, um, I, but I think this is a four-rod hook, and it's attached to braided line. The braided line is on a bait cast reel. Uh, this 30-pound test. Um, in the setting where I'm going to use this in the pond that I'm fishing in, I probably don't use, need this size, but I'm, that's what I have tied on. I'm, that's what I'm going to use. And that's a Palomar, Palomar knot that's uh, secured the hook to the line. And if you look, the line is very dark colored. Well, farther up the line, I don't know if you can see this too well. It's actually moss green colored, they call this. Well, Florida has a lot of dark water, tannic stained. So I like to color my line and I do that with a Sharpie. 
a Magnum Sharpie. And uh, I'll show you a picture here of what that marker is. And I just run it up and down the last, say, three feet of line. It helps it uh, disappear in the water, at least it, I think so. So there's a pointy end on a Senko and a blunt end on the Senko. You're going to put it in on the blunt end. You could put it on the other end, but I start out this end. If it gets torn up, I may turn it around or I might bite off the edge and put it back on. Go right down the middle. And there isn't any seam here that you have to worry about. It's just shaped round all the way around. Go right down the middle until I get to the bend, just like that. Then I come out. Then I'm going to turn, slide this down. Uh, this particular bait has a lot of oils in it. Uh, it slides on the worm hook very easily. This is an offset hook, by the way. And then you turn it around, slide it up, and turn it. And spread it out over the eye of the hook. And you see how it sits on the shoulder? Keeps it from falling down. And then I let it lay because what I want this to do is exactly in line where I came out to be where I'm going to go in with my hook. So I'm right about, there is where it lined up, okay. And there, at the bottom where my thumb starts, is where this is going to go through the plastic almost like this. So in order to do that, you scrunch this up a little bit. I often go through the middle because this is a thicker worm like that. See how straight it is? And then I'll stretch it up and catch just the tip. Now it stays straight, but all I got to do is break that little bit of plastic on a hook set and I got the fish. Uh, skinnier worms, I sometimes bury that hook right up into the middle of it, like you saw me do on the four inch worm where I was fishing earlier. But this one, this is the way I'm going to rig it now. I want to show you what this looks like when it hits the water and what it does. And I'm not sure how well you can see this, but when it hits the water, you throw it out, it'll probably hit like that. And you probably can't see it too well, but it wobbles on its way down. And I guess the fish like that. Um, but see, if you give it a little, just a little pull, it comes off the bottom and floats it a little and then slowly sinks to the bottom. Where if I had a bullet weight on the front of it, it would sink much faster. So part of what I'm going to fish with this way is to throw it out and I may actually twitch it. And it works very much like a fluke in that it looks like something that's kind of dying. But for the most part, I'll throw it out, let it fall, and it'll take a while. This is only at the most three feet deep. Um, and let it sink on the bottom, then lift it up and feel for it, lift it up and feel for it, lift it up and feel for it. If it feels different, then I'm going to set the hook. It may just be on some grass, but it may also be in a fish's mouth. All right, let's go fishing. Today is different than it was the other day. It's earlier in the day. It's 2.40ish. But as you can see, it's pretty overcast today. It was breezier the other day. Today there's a breeze, but I don't think it's as steady as it was the other day. I'm going to throw that out. I happen to know where it just went, that it's probably only got about two and a half feet to hit the bottom because there is weeds growing there. With this having no weight on it, it probably isn't going to sink down into the weeds. It's just going to lay there, especially since when it hit the water, it was horizontal and not vertical like it would be if I put a weight on it. So now I'm feeling it for the first time. So I lift up. I did feel that it was in the weeds, but it pulls very easily out of that, unlike what it would do if it was with a weight on the front. And this is a pretty slow presentation because this particular thing doesn't sink very well. So I'm going to pull it. It will come forward towards me a little bit and then I'm letting it sink. All right. So we'll pick it up. We'll throw it again. Let's go this direction.
All right, got a fish. He's got it. There it goes. I got him. Now he started to swim away with it. Sometimes he'll tap on it, but this one just started to swim away. And you probably couldn't see my line swimming, but. All right, not a bad fish. That's a stout hook, so <laughs> it can be hard to get out of the fish. Fishy, thank you for coming so I could show him it works. Here he goes. All right, Ken, that's how you do one of them anyway. There's the fish. I can feel him. There he goes. I think he dropped it. There goes, he's swimming with it. Got him. Oh, it's starting to bleed. See you later, fish. There you go, Ken. Now that was probably a harder one to detect. I could tell he was there. He wasn't swimming away with it drastically and he wasn't chomping on it an awful lot. But if I just held it tight every couple of seconds, you could feel a little bit of something. So the issue is, does he have it by the tail or has he got it in his mouth? Eventually he started to swim a little bit over the side and I just decided what the heck I'm gonna take a uh, a chance and set the hook and sure enough he was there I had a bite there he is he's picking it up he's oh, he's swimming away got him that I was afraid of. He swallowed that one and I got it out. All right, let's see how it goes. Let's try a different worm. This is the zoom trick worm. If I was going to be throwing this with a bullet weight on the end, this is kind of pointed. I then bite off the tip of it. I bite off the tip so that the bullet weight sits more on top. But since I'm not doing that, I'm going to go straight in. Put it to the bend. Come out right in the middle. And then, so I don't tear the plastic much. I just wet this in my mouth, this part, just to lubricate it so we can slide over the eye all by itself. There it goes. And I'm going to put straight in where the bend was straight stretch the plastic put it up like that now we got a straight worm oh there's one there he goes he's a little guy yeah Got him. <laughs> Little guy. Whoa. 
There's a good sized fish on the other side. Just went after something. Okay, here we go. Tap, tap, tap. Swimming off. Set the hook. Not a bad fish. Right in the roof of his mouth. There it goes. There it goes. And he's gone. Okay, tap, tap, tap. There it goes. Ooh, that's a nice one. Let me just throw my worm. <laughs> there he goes. That last fish threw off the hook. I'm going to change to the wave worm. It's kind of bright colored on the bottom, darker on the top. Got some orange, got some yellow. Same thing, right down the middle. Straight in until I get to the bend. Come out on the flat side as best I can in the middle. Wet the hook. Now this worm is skinnier from front to back than the zoom worm is, but it still works the same way. Okay, tap, 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 there we go. Got him, got him, got him, got him. That's a little one. In case you're wondering, I, two or three fish ago, I bent the barb down on the hook because I didn't want the fish to swallow the hook and then really hurt them getting it out. Ken, that wasn't the way to do it. One just hit it right there, just as I was lifting it out of the water. And I set the hook way too early. He didn't even have it in his mouth yet. And just yanked it out. So Ken, that's a good example of a bad example. Okay, ready, set, got it. Not Ken. I never even felt them. The, if you pay attention enough, especially on braid, when he picked up the worm, I could feel it even though the line was not tight. So I decided not to wait. That's a nice fish. And I just decided to set the hook. There he goes. All right, well, we've caught a number of fish. Ken, I hope that you have some better idea of what it feels like when you're getting a bite on a plastic worm. Hopefully a lot of people learned something, some techniques, some way to feel when you have a bite ways to use your plastic worms. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. Push the bell, you'll get a notice when I put out another video. Share this with a friend. Everybody's sitting at home with nothing to do. Try and help them out. Thanks for watching. Bye now.